Hi everyone, my name is Teresa Kubacka and I'm a data scientist. I am not affiliated with Matplotlib, but I've been using it almost daily for the past few years. And I noticed that people are quite unhappy with it. Given that the majority of data scientists use it regularly, it sums up to a lot of suffering. Yes, Matplotlib is not the easiest, but it is super powerful and has many amazing functionalities. So how can we reduce the amount of suffering? These are my three tips on how to stop crying. Step one. Understand the inner workings of MPS. It is composed out of three layers. On the bottom, something that does the actual drawing. You rarely interact with that. In the middle, all the components of your chart, which are called artists, organized as a graph. On the top, a scripting layer that lets you create and modify groups of artists. And what do I mean when I say that the chart is a graph of artists? I mean that on the top, we have a topmost parent container, a figure. Inside the figure, we have axes. And inside axis, you have more granular components, like line or patch, which are the geometrical features that represent your data, text objects, spines or xy axis, and their children. Each of these objects can be stored in a variable and modified in place directly. Now, the problem is that, for historical reasons, the PLT API is kind of EU. Matplotlib originally tried to compete with MATLAB, and it is the MATLAB approach that was kind of bad. It doesn't do things directly. Instead, it tries to guess what is the latest active object and modify it. So we can only have an indirect control by creating the objects in the right sequence, so it doesn't always work as expected. Imagine if other libraries work like this. Likely, the object-oriented API is the same. It lets us control and modify artists directly, also on a very low level. So what can we do in practice? If we take our graph of components, we can use the PLD API to initialize and lay out the top components, figure and axis, because there is no guesswork involved, and then do everything else directly using the object-oriented API. So this would be the revised layered structure of Matplotlib. And of course, it can be that the way that the object-oriented API is defined is not compatible with what you are used to. In this case, you can hide the artist layer and use an MPL wrapper, such as Seaborn, Pandas, Plot9, or Proplot, and interact with the artist's API only when you really need to. And the cool thing is, it is possible to mix and match those wrappers. So sometimes I end up with a complex chart where one subplot is generated with pandas plot, another with Seaborn, and a third one in pure matplotlib. Second step is to treat visualization as any other piece of code. Let me give you some inspiration. I loop over data when I can. Data frames are particularly good for this both in long and wide format. I also use zip, especially when working with subplots. And the cool trick is to use the zip longest function from either tools, which doesn't stop where the shortest variable is exhausted. Here, I use it to get rid of redundant subplots. Next step. Instead of hard coding the styling, you can store it in a dictionary and then feed it as keyword arguments to the plotting function. This way, you can easily change things or reuse the colors in other components of the chart. And here I use small multiples, so I declare the styling of highlighted versus background data. In complex visualizations, I structure code into functions, and I aim to separate style, data, and layout in. Here I combine the two previous examples and refactor them, so that I have one function to draw the subplot, second function to lay out the subplots, and I apply the styling stored as variables outside of the chart, only at the very end. MPL has also a really useful functionality to declare style sheets. You can define your own or pick an inbuilt one. You can then apply it temporarily or for all charts in the current session. Last trick, sometimes it is easier to draw things on charts in other coordinate systems, not using the data values. For example, you can draw lines from 0 to 100% of the chart range. And to position an annotation, you can use data coordinates, relative coordinates, or even coordinate systems of other artists, like the legend here. The last step is to own your visualization. It is crucial that you know what you want to visualize, and do not rely on a plotting library to make design decisions for you. Why? Visualization is communication, it is inherently ambiguous, and there is no single best way to do things. Even when using the same data and the same chart type, the visualization may need to look very differently depending on whom you need to present it to. So I want to share with you some data resources and inspire you to embark on the data journey with Matplotlib. Thank you.